Now, after having a clear idea uh, and understanding of the architecture of Node.js, now we should understand, or maybe uh, you might be wondering, or maybe at some point of your brain might be saying, hey, uh, we just discussed that Node.js is a single threaded environment. I mean, it runs on a single thread. That's the event loop, right? It means at a time, uh, if you have understood our previous video about uh, types of pro executions, then multi-threaded is looks very promising. I mean, it can handle multiple processes at the time, and it can also handle multiple requests at the time. Then why can't we go with the multi-threaded programming languages like Java, right? What's the point of using single-threaded environment in a pace where we can have octa-core, hexa-core processors in our laptops and uh, computers, right? So I mean, you can generate, you can run a server which has octa-core, and you can utilize the full CPU power. Right, so the ground question is always the same. Why can't we use the multi-threading concept and why rely on a simple single-threaded concept? So in this video, we'll try to understand what are the problems with the multi-threaded server which we were facing or which any application developer was facing while he was working with a very high traffic website or application and due to which we had to reinvent the wheel a bit more and we should convince ourselves that multi-threaded has its own limitations which cannot be dealt with the current internet traffic and that's what and that thought process gave us a new solution where Google engineer has developed or leveraged the power of JavaScript by developing a new runtime environment for JavaScript on the backend side, which is very, very good at handling millions of requests in a single time. So multi-threaded are not really good at handling uh, millions of requests, but indeed Node.js server can actually help you handle millions of millions of requests, even though it is a single-threaded programming language. Right. So let me explain you or walk you through or compare both multi-threaded and Node.js server how it's going to happen. Right. So in a multi-threaded programming language, each thread has or each thread performs its operation in a synchronous way. First thing, first thing which you need to understand over here is a multi-threaded programming language like Java, it used to perform all the actions. Uh, by creating thread and each thread performs its actions in a synchronous way. Let's say uh, this the API a web call has one uh, DB insertion or maybe one DB read operation, one file write operation, one network operation, and then response, right? request and response. Now, when a single threaded or when a multi-threaded programming language like Java comes into picture, what it does is when there are at a single point of time, at, I mean, one at one second, like Amazon on big billion days or uh, Flipkart on big billion days, these guys uh, on a single day when they are launching a new phone or anything, hundreds of people want to buy the same thing again and again, right? I mean, at the same time. At that point of time, there are lots of requests coming in within one second or two second gap, or I would say concurrently, they're coming in concurrent. Now, each request of them has to read a DB, write, and one network operation, and then response, right? It means when a user enters to buy something and before he acknowledges to see something, this is what operations are happening behind the scenes, right? Now, both of these or three of these are considered to be blocking operations in Node.js, but whereas any syn synchronous programming language like Java or anything, how they deal with it is, they deal with synchronously. It means first the request comes in, then DB read operation is performed. Until DB operation is not done, file write operation is done, is, is in waiting condition. Once DB is done, file is done, network, then response is achieved. But so far, well and good. What's wrong in it? You are able to handle hundreds of requests parallelly. It means hundreds of people are able to buy your product on a big billion days or Flipkart, on Amazon or Flipkart by using the multi-threaded concept. Right? Perfectly fine. 
whereas node js what it does it takes the request and it gives to somebody else and then it is taking another request but this is still in the pending state right so what happens is that when multiple requests come to the server in a multi-threaded environment if you see here request 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 here two request and here three request what's happening is that the thread is in waiting condition so there is a concept called as thread waiting or let me simply explain you right every uh, backend server which is performing on a multi-threaded it has its limitation that it cannot create few number of i mean it cannot create threads more than particular number or more than a threshold value now this is going to be a really good breaking point or the birth reason for node.js which is a event loop and uh, asynchronous programming concept right so here the problem is that let's say you got 10000 request 10k request per second i am talking everything in second 10k request per second then and also your response time is <coughs> one second right so 10k request yes our, our multi-threaded environment can create 10k threads now traffic has increased 100k request comes into picture now the the limitation to our server is that it can create maximum only 20k threads at a time it cannot create uh, more than 20k threads now what happened to this 80k request they are in pending state that's what we see sometimes that we are still under loading condition we don't even see any web page because the first 20k whoever got access they have entered into the uh, website and they are able to do operations whereas other 80k customers are gone now the problem actual problem arises let's say out of this 20k only two or three people perform the correct operation and remaining all left without doing anything and by the time they come back because they have to do all of these things right they have to purchase a device there might be any case that he might not be his payment is declined or user changed his mind now out of this 20, if only the success rate is 1%, this 80k people are waiting and obviously when you wait and you ask for a customer to wait, he will be waiting only if it is very urgent, otherwise he will be leaving the website. Now this is the problem. It means on a sale day or on a highly uh, productive day or on a highly sale day, customers are okay to wait a bit more long, I mean, if they are okay to have a response time of five seconds also, but as long as their order is placed successfully. But on a regular day, no, nothing matters. You just place and everything is gonna be cool because on a regular day, the criteria would be over somewhere here, right? That's what exactly happens in multi-threaded server. So the limitation is on a regular normal days where the traffic is not heavy, it's going to act very good so all the threads are in processing state and nobody is in waiting state and threads respond back and they are available for next request right now how how can you handle such a problem on a big sale days or when you literally don't know when is your traffic gonna increase suddenly let's take an example of twitter let's take an example of facebook suddenly some uh uh, big movie is getting released and they started posting and they retweet 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 now within seconds over the globe how many number of people are retweeting so traffic can increase at any point of time now the solution is increasing the power of system right second thing increasing the number of systems so when this 10k request each system can have 20k uh, threads then i can either do to have a system which can actually generate 100k threads or i can increase the number of systems which can generate 20k so that i can tackle this situation now both of these both of these are expensive right because you are increasing the power it means you are buying a laptop of 16 to 32 gb obviously you are going to pay more money similarly you are going to buy more and more laptops of 8 gb then also you are going to buy money 
so this is called as vertical scaling so if you recollect our memory in the first uh, back the uh, and components of back end development scaling was one important thing it means scaling to the to cater or to support the traffic which is going to increase is very very important in back end development and i would say this is what matters a lot to back end engineers and this is called as vertical scaling and this is called as horizontal scaling here you add you increase number of instances of the same server that is 8 gb 8 gb 8 gb and vertical scaling here you increase the power of your existing system that is 8 to 16 16 to 32 32 to 64 you increase the memory of that system which is both this is more costly this is more cost efficient costly and this is bit less costly so horizontal scaling <coughs> is good when compared to vertical scaling uh, but in horizontal scaling again now you have to divide the traffic in between your multiple instances it means you are running same code in different different instances now when somebody some request comes in you have to intelligently determine or divide your traffic so that's going to be achieved using load balancers load balancers right so every system has its own breakdowns and own complexities involved in it that yeah this is what the problem in multi-threaded system now how node.js is going to tackle such a situation right so now let's see how node.js tackles this problem and how the design of node.js is uh, ready to accept millions of requests right in node.js every request any request it comes to it it pushes in the event loop so that's the first thing so it means it is not blocking so let's say it gets 10k request or it gets 100k request it doesn't matter to node.js it directly takes that request and puts in the event queue it means the user is going to start his journey but his journey is going to happen a little slow but that is totally fine unless user is not even seeing any website or any page right he's going to see it a little slow but that's fine right because that's what companies want on a big sale day because on a sale day even your payment might take three or four minutes but if the payment is success you're happy but you don't are you're not expecting in two seconds the payment to be completed right so node.js takes it technically there won't be much difference because node.js handles each of the workload in a separate worker threads uh, so eventually the work is getting splitted not like multi-threaded i mean not like uh, it is doing everything on the single thread it is handling its work to uh, multi, uh, worker threads right but see the intelligence here is that it is accepting everybody it is allowing everybody to enter into the system and then slowly one by one it is assigning it is doing the task and assigning it to the worker threads and worker threads are responding back and once the worker thread respond back it is responding back to the request response here there is no thread process creation or no threads created it's everything is pushed in a queue no thread waiting nobody is waiting everybody enters into the process and everybody is going to stay happy so it means it can tackle millions of millions of requests with ease because of its inbuilt nature of how the architecture is built whereas multi-threaded programming languages they have to suffer a lot because there has a limitation in the number of threads an application can or a server can create right so this is how node.js tackled it very very well by segregating the request or pushing the request into event queue and then continuously monitoring the event queue with the event loop which runs on a single thread so event loop runs on a single thread an event loop delegates its work to the worker thread which are asynchronous worker thread it means it gives all of its asynchronous uh, threads or work 
to the next thread uh, that ne- that will happen con- with the help of context switching and whatever it has to do it will be pl- completed that way so let me give you a r- simple real world example how nodejs uh, works and how multi threaded works in a simple real life program a uh, real life example and you would clearly understand that nodejs is going to be a very good solution if their application is having uh, high traffic and there are times where flipkart or amazon or such e-commerce which have heavy uh, traffic they uh, are completely migrating or switching their application to nodejs server on a normal uh, sale days and on a sale days and on a normal days it is falling back to the java platform i don't know if how much of this is true but yes it can be possible because nodejs is made to tackle all of these problems very efficiently right so let's see a real world example wherein you can understand this concept pretty clear and you will be in confidence when we when you explain it to the any interviewer or anybody who can say that how can you use nodejs if it is a single threaded right let's take an example or yeah so let's take an example of restaurant okay so a restaurant right so what are the typical tasks or works in a restaurant right so first one to give the token right second one to uh, show the table right or to uh, accept token accept token and seat him seat the customer at the table right then show the menu and collect the order right the one who ever uh, uh, take shows the menu he takes the order also and give the order in the kitchen fifth one give the order in the kitchen and now uh, prepare the food prepare the food sixth one serve the food seventh one collect the bill amount and done right these are the typical actions or uh, task which any restaurant has to do completely for a com- for accepting a customer right now my analogy is that each treat each customer is a request and restaurant is your application okay now how does single async uh, multi threaded programming uh, would work and how does uh, asynchronous programming or the single handed node js will work right first we'll see multi threaded right here each task is assigned with each request is assigned with a thread each request is assigned with a thread correct right each request is assigned with a thread it means here customer is equal to equal to thread or request right now what happens in this case so what happens is when a customer is assigned or is treated as a one request there will be one person assigned to him so thread is nothing but one person so what this person is going to do this person gives the token uh accept the token he only the same person and because the same thread does all the task right synchronously accept the token and seat the customer seat the customer show the menu collect the order give the order in the kitchen the same user 
प्रिपेयर द फूड ही विल प्रिपेयर द फूड बिकॉज एवरी टास्क इज गोइंग टू बी डन बाय हिम इट सेल्फ प्रिपेयर द फूड सर्व द फूड एंड कलेक्ट द बिल अमाउंट राइट सो दिस इज टिपिकली हैपन्स इन ए मल्टी थ्रेडेड इट मीन्स वेन एवर ए कस्टमर कम्स इन देर विल बी अ पर्सन वेटिंग फॉर हिम एंड दैट पर्सन इज गोइंग टू टेक रिसीव दैट कस्टमर and he is going to serve him till the end it works really well it works really very well but let's say you have 100 employees you have 100 employees you have 100 employees and 100 customers then 100 customers are very happy there is no waiting time for them uh, everybody is the a person is with them and they are guiding him from start to the end they are awesome now uh, customers your restaurant has become so popular customers have become thousand now how are you going to tackle are you going to have thousand thousand employees back again now your customers have grown to 10000 now can you do that because each restaurant he is also having its own limitation it cannot hire more than few employees because let's say i hired 10000 employees do you guarantee that on every day customers is going to come 1000 10000 customers on weekdays or weekends it might come then but you cannot say that you will be hiring them only on weekends or you may be uh, you cannot pay them for the entire month because only couple of days 10000 customers are coming it means multi threaded works very well in certain stages where you know that traffic is going to be controlled and you are okay if people are in waiting condition but who do you like or paying people are getting 16 gb ram phones right now because they are they become rich they don't want to wait even for an application to run slow everything needs fast for them right so how to tackle this right now how a typical restaurant works right here asynchronous here each task is a thread not the customer is assigned with a thread right obviously restaurants work this way there will be one person giving the token his work is just the token giving he he won't involve in any activities he gives the token and he sends them in right the other person accept the token and seeds him right so here after first person is done with his task the way he is informing the second one is the call back so what is the call back over here the token number call back is equal to the token number so how do you identify each customer so when a request comes in how do you identify that request throughout the journey with this token number that is request id or the call back so you will say i have given the token so the next person will identify you with this token number the same way this token guy whoever seats him he takes the token or the table number and collects the order different person collects the order person 3 person 1 and this is done by person 2 right now some other person delivers the order in kitchen this guy's work is only delivering multiple uh, orders to the kitchen other guy chef chef prepares the food his work is only preparing the food chef prepares the food he is the fifth person and server serves the food this guy is sixth one these are the six different threads and bill guy takes the payment this guy is seven so here 
in this way of execution of the restaurant the nobody is in waiting state first even if 1000 or 100 or 10000 employees are going to come what will happen maybe the chef guy is very busy he is doing lot of orders but at least people will know that they can enter the restaurant and they can see it and have fun their food might be delayed which we see a lot with the if the more people are there in the restaurant then chef is going to take time server is going to take the one who serves the food is also going to take time bill guy also won't come that fast right but at last at least you are sitting in the restaurant and you are sitting in the restaurant and having your food with some time in you with by sparing some time but here what the heck would you do by eating your food in just 10 minutes and that guy is bothering you to leave the restaurant because he has to pick up new task so that's the that's the exact problem which node js solved and the perfect real world analogy of node js and multi threaded programming is the restaurant example where restaurant follows the asynchronous procedure by assigning each work to a particular person and that person is responsible or accountable to that particular task and he doesn't care a thing about other task and one task to other task is linked with the help of a callback or identifying each customer with the help of some identification which is going to keep us in the loop once the request comes in and once the request ends out that's how you track a request and that's how you are mapping all the actions to it till the end this is what asynchronous programming is and that's why a single threaded server like node js is playing a crucial role in the current uh, backend development and it will play current uh, a crucial role going forward as well right so that's all about multi threaded and node js now you must have a clear idea of why uh, node js is rocking the current backend programming and when is it a good choice and when it is a bad choice so if the less number of requests are coming to your application or you have a fixed set of and or it is a b2b application where only few number of clients are going to use it then java is going to be a very very multi threaded concept is going to be a very useful to you because uh that will really help you in reducing the cost but if the application is scaling and then maybe at that point of time you will lose certain response time or you will be delayed by a bit but at least you are serving more number of request and that's what matters to users or business because once the business scales out they are they will be in a position to have the multi thread and multiple systems running in there because they are earning more money because their business has grown a lot right that's it